Should I stop making streaming programming YouTube videos because of Gen AI? Hey, data fans, this is my brain dump of speculation, so take it with a little grain of salt. I can already hear you shout behind your screen. No, don't do that. We need your videos to quickly solve our code problem. And I will tell you to RTFM, and then you would argue about learning by imitation with a video. I've been surprised by my master students who do that a lot. In December of last year, I asked them to deploy a scikit-learn model behind FastAPI. And the first thing they would do is ask ChatGPT to do it for them. <laughs> the second step for them is following some YouTuber going through all of the steps to install, implement, and run FastAPI quick start tutorial. And I ask them, why don't you just go and read the official documentation? It's up to date. Why do you need to follow a human following the same out of date tutorial? I don't know, maybe I'm a boomer. <laughs> anyway, if learning by imitation for video is what you need, can you get away with replacing any human element with AI? Open your favorite editor, create a new app.py script and run the streamlit run app.py command. Actually, maybe I should do this instead of recording myself every two weeks. And it could get even deeper than voice and face cloning. DeepMind released a paper about fun search on generating new solutions to math problems with LLMs constrained by evolving initial solutions and an evaluator to ensure solutions solve the given problem. At the same time, GPT agents with web browsing can search the web and ping APIs for additional details to answer specific user questions. LLMs with the help of agents and retrieval heuristics could take on any what CSS code to change the background color of my streamlit button question. It would mix code snippets from multiple online guides, build a working Python solution and, and let's stream it, generate a video code walkthrough on VS Code on demand, thus making every Python YouTuber worthless. You can dispute that by saying I'm falling into AI BS talk here. Gen AI solving streamed CSS problems with a video generated on the fly just for me and totally replacing every YouTuber that, that could take a few years. So my channel is fine. I should just keep pumping streamed radio, whatever Python dashboard content. But this is not the only thing that's been on my mind for those past two, three months. I would gladly continue pumping videos about streamed, but I'm not sure streamed nor any Python slash JavaScript web framework are evergreen topics that will still be relevant in the following years. I released a poll asking you if you would rely on ChatGPT to generate full HTML, CSS, JavaScript apps instead of, of relying on Streamlit. And the results were promising because while you're not replacing Streamlit with AI generated full stack web apps yet, there's a small majority of you who use ChatGPT to generate bits of HTML and CSS to inject into the Streamit app. Note that this is how you slowly creep into JavaScript, by the way. Like Pauline, data scientist at IBM by day and entrepreneur by night. I recorded her giving a talk at Lyon Data Science about her latest project, iacrea.com, which uses a picture of your living room and gives home staging recommendations to pimp your house with deep learning. Maybe I should use it, by the way. <laughs> Pauline was initially building data science apps with HTML templates and Flask. It worked for her smaller projects, but Flask eventually proved too limiting for bigger projects. I have the same problem with Streamlit, by the way. I can build all of the JavaScript custom components in the world. Some things like real-time Firestore interaction will still be a pain. So for her next creation, IACREA, Pauline learned Next.js with a Tailwind template and a Superbase backend. All home staging requests will go through a separate Python backend leveraging a control net model constrained by a window and ceiling masks found by a segment anything model, I think. The project is now generating a monthly revenue of 1k dollars, which is good job. I guess that's what most of us want today, create web apps that leverage AI in a particular niche to solve customer pain points. And that's probably why you start learning Streamlit. And to be honest, while Superbase authentication slash database and Stripe monthly subscription is doable in Streamlit, that's not something I totally recommend doing because Streamlit's rerun events loop makes it a pain to run callbacks on specific actions. For now on, you'd like to replace Streamlit with Next.js connected to a Python backend for, for this. 
Or maybe use a Python library like Reflex or Django if the JavaScript world is too scary for you. How far can an LLM help you create an entire full stack web application connected to Stripe and Superbase with decent performance and high accessibility standards. It's not completely out of reach. Do you remember DataButton? They were providing a platform to live code and host streaming applications. I vaguely remember them building a GPT that acted as an AI assistant to build streaming apps. And you could ask it how to change the background color of a streaming button, and it was probably fine-tuned enough to send you back the CSS hack. Well, DataButton is not hosting streaming apps anymore. DataButton has semi-pivoted into providing a conversational AI bot to build data web apps. It's still in alpha at this point. Basically, you prompt a specific type of app like chatbot with authentication and monthly subscription, and it would implement it for you. Avra from DataButton has a video about building React apps conversationally. I'll link it in the description below and nope, this is not sponsored. And as 2024 is announcing the deployment of Gen AI features into products, it's not far-fetched to think of web UI builders like Squarespace to integrate some Gen AI chatbots or a Figma wireframe to HTML Gen AI assistant. Actually, if you look into Figma plugins, I think there's a, a builder.io that does generate HTML CSS from a Figma prototype. A lot of people are working in a Gen AI code productivity space. There's a market app for grabs, GitHub Copilot X and Cursor SH being concrete examples. So yes, I'm curious if there is a soon to come world where streaming apps are completely replaced by LLM driven front end code and no one will watch my channel about streaming anymore. So like every fast-growing AI YouTuber, maybe I should focus my efforts on how Gen AI can generate UIs to showcase your data science ideas by generating streamlit UIs or Next.js boilerplate, Figma prototypes or vanilla JavaScript. Gen AI is looking to disrupt the developer world a lot. It, it should make it easy to ideate and mass produce both tutorials and apps. This will have an effect on me as a developer educator, but also on you as a data scientist or analyst. Because if anyone can create a data analysis web app with ChatGPT that doesn't look like everybody else's streamlit, how do you differentiate yourself from the sea of data web apps? After two years as a streamlit YouTuber, here's my oversimplification of growing on YouTube in an ocean of code tutorial content. You can position your videos to be searchable by providing how-to tutorials on specific questions that people will type in YouTube search box, like how to change the streamlit CSS, <laughs> and then you get three of my videos. These are the basic SEO stuff. Or you position your videos to be browsed and clicked from the homepage. For example, if you watch my epic streamlit tutorial part one, you will probably get part two suggested on your next YouTube page. Growing a channel is basically a mix of both the search and the browse sides of the coin. You generally start out by uploading a lot of search optimized content and then you upload enough videos to get a full catalog of evergreen videos that get recommended to you over time. Now, if Gen AI makes it super easy to create those search optimized video with an AI face and voiceover answering any questions that you have, it will become very hard to beat the YouTube long game through the SEO perspective. YouTube does try to deal responsibly with AI generated videos. It will ask creators to disclose whether a video was created with AI, it is designing tools to detect synthetic videos. You will be able to request the removal of videos if they were synthetically generated. Uh, there could be upcoming limitations to the monetization of AI powered channels, which will surely limit their impact. And maybe the algorithm will push AI generated videos in a very different way. We, we still don't really know what's going to happen in terms of AI regulation on YouTube. On the other hand, it's on us as creators to see how we can counter this upcoming AI generated tutorial wave by not relying on search, but being recommended by the algorithm thanks to cool, inspiring and creative co-tutorials. Even you told me in a poll that you just click on my face whenever you see it on the home page because you expect another epic machine learning streaming tutorials. Not like this video. <laughs> Content creators like myself will start experimenting with getting out of the search tutorials to browse interesting videos. How can we inject personality, stories, and 
our own experiences in the tutorial that is being explained so that people remember us when our next video is recommended and so that you can click on my face again. I, I can think of some channels like Yannick Kilcher, whose content definitely is not easily replicable by an NLM and he's probably safe from any short-term Gen AI tutorial wave. In a world where Gen AI enables anyone to go wide and must produce small tutorials, it is interesting in-depth ideas and expertise, personality and making people inspired that will make a comeback on YouTube. Just so you know, that's already the recommendation by most YouTube gurus, but this will become even more significant now. That means no more streamy to-do app in your resume. You should build that solution that solves uh, human emotional pain points in a particular niche like like home staging. Anyway, th that was a lot of rambling and speculations with no real actionable advice for you. <laughs> I promise my next video will be some kind of actionable searchable tutorial. Promise. But what does that mean for the future of my channel if bots can generate any streaming tutorials and if Gen AI web apps are going to replace Streamlit. Well, right now I'm thinking there will be less tutorials on my channels and a little more chill thoughts like, like this video. Uh, uh, maybe also a little less Streamlit and a little more how can AI help us build web apps as a data scientist. There's a poll which shows you're waiting for that Gen AI Fast API video, so I know I have people waiting for it. It's not just in my imagination. <laughs> This is all still in the air, there will still be tutorials, maybe there will be more complex like integrations of Streamlit to other platforms like the Streamlit OpenAI Assistance video that you really seem to like, given the poll results and your comments. Yes, I study your polls and comments, so thank you for interacting. Uh, I'll see you around, bye!